be pretty disruptive to your game plan. Ten seconds remaining. But the Omni Knight ban, very standard. No one really wants to lane Five against that hero remaining. or play against that hero. Witch Doctor also, very Radiant standard. Team pick. Taint with the first pick. Earth Spirit still there. Sand King also available. Gyrocopter is something so, 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 so many teams are just picking up the second they can, but we'll see if that's the case here in this game. Some teams do not value the remaining. hero at all and just prefer to pick their supports in the first couple phase so they don't Five get their cores uh, countered. One second, Dyer I cannot pick. hear you. Give me one moment. Hero picked up by Taint oh, Gaming. You, have me, you, you still have me muted in, in game, game, right? Yeah. You're muted so, in I game. Think, so I think you should unmute me in game because I know talking just because I have two different bounds. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll unmute you in so, game and I'll just mute you in Discord. Yes, that would probably be the better idea. Yes. Ten right. seconds right. remaining. Right. Forgive me for that bit of a mistake. Uh, give me one second. I'm gonna mute him in Discord so I don't have to hear him twice. No offense. All right. Anyways, Bane picked up by Team Blue. Another high priority support hero. Just has so much setup potential, good control, good save potential, and brain sap really, really hurts for a lot of these offlaners that are in the meta right now. Ten seconds remaining. Did I unmute you in game? Yes, you are Five now unmuted in game. Remaining. Good. Are we? You're cutting in and out in game. Uh. Yeah, I have you unmuted. Let me see if I can turn up voice Whoop. yeah that it might be voice it might be voice i turned it up and i can hear you in and all right out. all right now i can hear are we good now are we good now are we good now yes. all right yes. be good okay yep all right blue go with yeah there's the duo that's one of their uh pretty standing opening duos bane bounty strong against this jakiro hero can't do anything against this right like your jakiro you want to walk up you want to click on heroes you want to be annoying and this duo does not care they just don't care you're going to get nightmare you're going to get enfeebled you're going to get clicked at by over venom slowing bounty and you can't do anything against this duo so excellent answer to the jakiro there definitely bounty hunter is so so good against those immobile those immobile supports he can just turn them into food yeah, absolutely. And that's Taint have to answer this. Definitely, definitely. And well, they need either an aggressive support of their own, like an Earth Spirit that kind of puts pressure on the bounty yeah, as well as all the other lanes, or a Nature's Prophet who oh. can rotate in response to a bounty hunter gank. Yeah, there it is. The position for Furion. I claim to, uh, as a person who's been running a lot of that recently in scrims, my team, yes, I can attest that hero's super, super strong. Uh... Great presence. The bounty hunter um, now has a split option because he can either stalk Furion and be useless and make the Furion kind of useless or try to play his own game and pressure lanes and deal with the fact that this Furion is just going to be globally reacting to them all game. At any point in time, he can just react. Yeah. So I don't know about this bounty pick. I think bounty is... He's kind of fallen out of favor recently, right? People have been picking stuff like Chen and Furion over him. But I think it's fine, and it kind of... They're both going to play this similar game where you're going to have the Jakiro and the Bane likely remaining. just harassing the offlaners the whole time, but then there's going to be that constant Five threat of the Prophet and the Bounty Hunter remaining. rotating to lanes. And in the mid, I think this... I, I love the, the Furion pick for Taint because when your mid gets ganked by a Bounty, you can now easily rotate two supports. Like, the Jakiro TP is not going to be slowed down at all, and the Nature's Prophet can just TP in and just start wreaking havoc. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the other thing you have to think about, though, with this with this Bane pick, though, is that if Bane TPs in, their ganks immediately failed. So I guess that's, that's the flip pick. Um, Bane could just TP in, and all of a sudden, that really strong gank is over. Like, he enfeebles a hero, he brain saps one, and then he nightmares one, and then all of a sudden, it's just it turned from the scenario where you were just going to kill a bounty or going to kill the mid, and then you can't, because you literally can't. Exactly. This uh Bane, an, an incredibly strong reactive defensive support that has a lot of setup potential for kills. We'll see what kind of cores Blue want to run with it to get kind of capitalize on that. But it will yeah, be Yeah, they need damage, rotate. which is the other big thing. Mm -hmm. Bounty, yeah. not the a good team The bands here coming out. Yeah, no, they need team fight. Okay, Underlord. 
That's a good, that's actually excellent answer there to the Jakira Furion. Uh, when I play Pause for Furion, when you're on Pause for Furion, absolutely every game I'm banning Underlord. That hero is just, I ban Underlord even when I don't have heavy pushing, because that hero is so annoying to go high ground into, is so annoying to go, even like those tier 2 towers with all, like all the armor they get now, he's so, it's just so annoying to push into. So, excellent pick there, gonna make this Furion's early game, like, pressure. Definitely, I uh, definitely agree. But speaking of early game pressure, they picked up the Tusk, which leads me to believe it's going to be an offlane Furion, which it is... I like mm. it in in the sense that he's he can safely play against Bounty and Bane by using <laughs> his trees to kind of pull the wave back to his tower. Ten yeah, yeah. Uh, and it does leave the... the but on the flip... Team Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say on the flip, Bane's just going to zone him level one, I feel. I agree. Really hard. I, I don't know how you play this land as Furion. I really don't. Because it's like, oh, you want to go up and you want to be, again, a Furion, kind of like the Shakira pick, right? You want to run up, you want to be aggressive, you want to be a lane dominator, you, you want to assert your dominance, literally. And Bane's just going to walk up and either Dying give you no damage or nightmare you. So. Oh, that's interesting. That's something I did not expect yeah. at all. Uh, against, I'm assuming it, it could be safe lane. So, because we do see that occasionally. The safe lane, Necrophos, is pretty good against these beefier offlaners. Just the aura Game really helps him trade efficiently. But in the mid, it would be pretty solid against the Dragon Knight, too. Seconds, that hero, just being around him is annoying. However, for DK with the Dragon's Blood, I think he could manage it. The ult is really what's going to... Yeah. Just the pickoff potential yeah. of tank gaming is huge right now. They've got the Tusk Snowball, oh, the yeah. Prophet TP, a Necro side that could quickly find a dead hero at any stage of the game. And we'll see what kind of carry they want to go to augment that. Unless, of course, it is going to be that uh, safe lane Necro. Yeah. I feel like, though, I'm still fa- Oh, shoot. My bad, it disconnected me. I will be in in just a second, so I apologize for that. I do not know why that happened a little weird. As three to, three to four heroes, uh, like, I don't know how you pick the- you, you pick off these heroes when they're- if they stay together as a group. I think that's the other thing. I agree. And we'll see. Maybe their last pick will sum up that. I, I agree. I think Blue's Draft is looking Ten very, very solid remain. right now, and and since they have hard to pick off heroes, the Necro does help with that five, because five, it's ult. Remain, remain. But you can, you have the Bounty Hunter to provide tracks and just scouting vision with Shadow Walk. That could become an issue to you know if you're trying to sneak up on enemy heroes. It could be hard to do when Bounty is providing all of that information to the to the Team Blue side. Yeah, I feel like like I said, I. Like, they have all this pickoff, but what, you're going to kill a Bane? I I don't know. They need to pick something. They need some... And now, the, the other issue is now, that, like, they need a damage dealer that has consistent damage is the other thing they need now. Like, they need a consistent damage dealing hero, and most of those heroes have been banned out. So, I don't... Jaro's still in the pool, actually. Jaro's still there. Lifestealer's still there. Yep. All right, Lifestealer. Yeah. A okay, really it's, good it's a good game. So. Underlord and Dragon Knight. Thanks to Feast. Yeah. Uh, great against... Uh, I think he's pretty good against Bounty. Really kind of a, a durable safe leaner. Hard to gank thanks to Rage as well. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. Bounty actually can't gank that Five hero if he has Rage. Exactly. You, actually, you actually just can't kill that hero. On the flip side, though, when Rage is down this game... If they kite Rage, he's dead. Every single team fight. Well, and in team fights, they have the Bane ult, which pierces his Rage. So that's even go that's going to be really problematic. Yeah, which pierces Rage anyway. Uh, the bright side is they do have a Jakiro Ice and Path along Blue range, have Jero. So. That's true. That's true. And they do have Tusk. Tusk is excellent. You can uh, you can save the Life Stealer mm -hmm. with Snowball. Yep. So there, there's that. Um, Jero, though, is still in the pool. I It's... Fav's Jero, as far as my recollection, isn't incredible by any means but it's it's not a bad gyro game yeah he, he in my opinion not, it's actually a pretty solid gyro very game. often as as far as i know uh we typically yeah i know he's been playing a lot of it's core venge, but that's not a this is not a core, core venge game no they, they're oh, gonna it's i think is gonna be great bad, though game. uh good against life stealer can kite him thanks to the ult great against nature's prophet that's even more wave clear for the trees but the underlord honestly by itself can handle the treants pretty easily 
Well, I feel like it's a good Jero game because you have these two beefy frontliners in the DK and the Underlord, right? Jero can just sit behind these heroes, and if they jump Jero, you have Bane right there to just counter-initiate, stop them from doing what they want to do, and then all of a sudden, he's turning around and he's killing you. Exactly, and of course, they have the Uberlord as well for the emergency bailouts if they are needed. That hero has seen so much play That's true. a lot of that, and they're going to grab Shadow Beast, so it's safe lane okay. Dragon Knight. Something I know yeah. Blue yeah, I guess so. have discussed, like, I, I had a conversation with some of their players, uh, especially Control, where DK can go to any of the three lanes. And I don't like That's it as true. an off laner at all. That hero, I, you're going to need a dual lane that in the off lane, but in, the, in a safe lane situation, I think it can function pretty fine. I mean, in a 1v1 against most off laners, he'll, he'll win. That hero with the Dragon's Blood, the Breathe Fire, can trade very effectively. So hopefully, so I, I imagine it shouldn't be a too tough a lane for Fav. And Pretty easy lane, in all honesty. And if he's against this Furion, he should do very well. Oh yeah, this, this Nature Prophet's not going to do anything in the safe lane. And with that hard stun there, it'll be yeah. even risky for that Nature yeah. Prophet to show his face at all. Yep, pretty much. Give me just one moment. I believe there's something I'm gonna have. I'm getting a lot of bad lag, but I don't know why. Time for okay. Uh, All right, and are you on? You're on camera, yeah? Yes. You're on main camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure. So I can click. Her. I just wanted to know if I had to be watching heroes, or if I could click on their item builds and such. Uh, it's not just us who's having ping though. Apparently. Yeah, the server is having issues right now. I think it, it's got to be the server because my sh yeah my OBS yeah, is, is streaming fine. Like it, the OBS says, it is at maximum speed. Like it's fine, but uh, I'm wondering if there's just. A, I mean, they've been rolling out a lot of updates today, so it is possible that we get some ping issues. Hopefully, they uh, subside yeah, rather certainly. quickly. I. I'm hoping to get this game really underway, and I want to do a quick shout out to Frogger who subscribed to my channel. Appreciate that for a sub. Exciting stuff. Uh, he did say if I cast this game, he would compensate me somehow since I was offered to cast another game today as well. Yeah, that's good old Frogger, dude. Rich boy Frogger. Shout out to Frogger, dude. The best, uh, I shouldn't say best, memeiest mid laner I know. <laughs> Are you sure he's not the best? Uh,. Yeah, okay, sure, Frogger, yeah. you're the best, buddy. <laughs> I wish. I believe in you, Frogger. I believe in you. Maybe we'll. Is he on a team for next season of 80 12? He's 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 on my team, dude. Oh, okay. Oh, he's wait. Fro he was Frogisha and the. That's right. Yeah. All right, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Played pretty well. Played pretty well. Oh, I, yeah, man. Except for that Invoker game. That was rough. <laughs> oh, he, he not not the Invoker game of his dreams. I mean, oh, they still won, okay. didn't they? Yeah, I mean, we did win. Pretty one-sided, actually. But anyway, off to the game in hand. Yeah, definitely going to be... Uh, I'm getting the occasional bit of lag, but it's not too horrible, I hope. Anyways, we've got the defending champions, Team Blue, on the side of the Dire. And heading up on the Dragon Knight is Fav, the safe lane DK. Their captain control going mid on the Shadow Fiend. Uberlord being played by Desmodus. The Bounty Hunter, one of my personal favorite heroes, played by Retman. And then Bane being played by Noble. Meanwhile, on Taint Gaming, it is R playing the Lifestealer. Jakiro by No... Uh, I can't pronounce no. that. Noka Sofer? Noka Sofer. I'm just going to call him... with Noka Sofer. That's such a dope name. Yeah, uh, I'm probably just going to call him Jakiro. Noka Sofer. Nature's probably being played <laughs> yeah. by Cloud Hop. Stone of Tuna playing the Tuscar and course on Necrophos, a hero we haven't seen in some time. I don't actually remember seeing this hero at uh, this whole season of 80 12, the games that I've cast. Uh, Hamlet playing that Necro. Interested to see how it plays out, but a little worried for it. Top. Bit of a yep. sideways glances at one another. May the best team win. Oh, so they're going to go duel in here. I think this Bane DK lane is sick, actually, into this Hurion Tusk. Like, if as long as little Bane got level 1. Uh, Bane, Bane isn't skilled level one, so he's gonna he's gonna see this lane, and then he should just grab nightmare. Like if Tusk tries to initiate onto DK or Bane, he just nightmares either Furion or the Tusk, and he, they walk away, and there's nothing they can do. Yeah, and I, I don't think uh, Control is gonna need any help at all in the mid. I I really no. feel like yeah, no. 
So no need to get that level 1 Enfeeble. Can probably even ignore Enfeeble for most of this game. You're not going to have to worry too much about ensuring yeah, you they win. don't really have right clickers. This is looking like an okay off lane for Taint, though. Lifestealer, probably one of the better safe lanes against the Underlord. Can easily ignore the harass from the Firestorm with Rage in the early game. Uh, as well as some sustain with Feast. Yeah, it's always nice. But on the on the other side, though, if actually Desmond just missed skills here, uh, you want to, in my opinion, anyway. I think you take Atrophy against Life Steal. Pretty agree. much every lane because I it's going to, it's going to allow you to trade with this hero, um, Feast, and like level one Firestorm. Like he gets hit by it for a few seconds and he doesn't care. Walks out, hits a couple creeps, back up to full HP, yeah, and then we... he lost the trade. So. We just saw that too. We're seeing he that literally right, right now. Yeah, he <laughs> walks right out of the firestorm, starts hitting Desmodus, and suddenly he's back to full HP. Yeah. And he's, back to full fine. HP. He doesn't really care. So, that lane here, but mid, mid's rough, I think, for this this Necro. Um, this is not your dream Necrophos lane, to say the least. Bounty no. can just sit here and make this guy's life awful. Have raises. This could actually be oh. first blood. One raise. The second raise does connect. There we go. Two quick raises and assistance from Revan, who's getting snowballed. Do they have the ice shards as well? That could be a kill. Yep. Nice rotation and recovery from Stone of Tuna for his team. But first blood, still a good trade for this bounty hunter. And control off to a great start in the lane now with max souls. Oh, yeah. That's that's not the kill you want to be giving there. I mean, obviously, uh, a return kill, always nice to be getting. Um, on even like snowball heroes like Bounty. But... Man, feeding Shadow Fiend first blood on your on your like counter SF hero. Ah, that's not it's not what you want. Definitely not. That's this I think this is gonna happen more than once too. They haven't placed a sentry in the mid yet, which against a bounty hunter, it, it feels like the one of the first things your supports ne do is go yeah. mid and place that sentry to make sure that this bounty's not gonna get you. And uh Revan looking for that crow, won't find it. Won't find it. Courier lives matter, by the way. They do. They do. Unfortunately for him, it's actually going to be flying here uh, in a second. So he actually is just wasting his time at this point. Yeah, he's... It's The timing is right for him to be here, but it just happens that... I think since Necrophos died, he just bought... bought like He just got his items when he died. So yep. he doesn't need the courier yep. at the moment. Pretty much, yeah. Got. Yeah, top ga top lane's going essentially as expected here. Like, DK is just essentially freely bopping creeps uncontested, and Bane is just sitting behind him, and they do anything, Bane's just gonna nightmare you and brain zap you, and then there's nothing you can do. And now Bounty's here, too, so this is actually they do have kill potential. not the favorite way. Oh, are they gonna go on to this Nature's Prophet? They get the Janata Strike off, trying to get in range. He doesn't have Dragon Tail, though, and without that, I don't know that they can actually kill him. Yeah, there's no way they actually get the kill without Dragon Tail. And you only has one point in uh, Breathe Fire, so the nuke damage from Breathe Fire is only like, yeah, it's only like 90 damage level one. Yeah, it, it's, even though I they I don't think they can kill, they def, almost definitely can't kill Fab unless they rotate in the Jakiro, then there's a, there's a chance. Uh, it's not a high chance, but a chance. I, I don't think they kill this Nature's Prophet either. Uh, not until they get Dragon Tail and a couple more levels on Fab. Yeah, I think what he gets uh, actually maybe not though. He's got he's got Dragon's Breath level two breath fire there. So if they actually land uh Nightmare Brain Sap Breath Fire, eh, it's close. I think if, if one one bounty hits level three and gets Shuri Toss, that's a dead fury on next time he walks up the lane. I agree. But the the bounty level three is probably one of the biggest power spikes in, in Dota. Frankly, just the oh, yeah. massive, it's, massive, it's massive damage on Shuriken Toss, and now he's got it. So a lot more kill potential. This Necro won't won't be able to pop the Ghost Shroud and hide himself. Uh, and He'll I mean, actually die because yeah. it's like even more damage. And this is a really rough lane for a Necro. Your Ghost Shroud doesn't help you against Shadow Fiend. It doesn't help you against Bounty Hunter. Nope. nope. It just kills you even faster. But Hero. Trying to burn up Retman a little bit, so they it seems they're aware of Bounty, but actually he could be in serious trouble in the way getting Shuriken toss, but they missed the close raise. Oh, missed the raise. The long raise though, that one will hit. Yeah, this is this is basically Blue's game plan. Every game just give give you know control some snow bully mid that can just 
get really fat really fast and then just win and executed to perfection here. Yeah, and with the bounty hunter, of course, that plays right into that game plan of just let's get a huge advantage as quickly as we can. Oh no. Blagging again? Yeah, I'm getting uh, some bad, bad ping. Uh, I don't know if it's ping or what, though. I'm checking my... I'm going to tab out really quick OBS. so I won't be able yeah. to hear you. I'm going to check my OBS. Something downloading. All right, well, hopefully it goes away or isn't too, too terrible. But at bot, it's like they may be trying for something. Yeah, you seem, you seem good now. You were like pretty bad. The Desmodus. And yeah, it looks like Blue gonna lose that, uh, that Abyssal Underlord yeah, in the off lane. Nice rotation. The damage potential is really, really high in this lane, especially if the Tusk comes to help. And even if the Tusk isn't enough, they could theoretically bring that Furion in as well. He is no stranger to TPing to early fights. Yeah, and I mean, you got this big beefy Underlord man, but one of the things no one ever talks about Underlord man, he's only got five armor against Lifestealer, who just shreds through, like, your health and your armor, he does not care, and you're a big, big, meaty shield of deliciousness, so. Yeah, this is, the Lifestealer pick was, is excellent against this Underlord. This is basically a free lane for the Lifestealer. Now Desmond is actually getting gone again, again here, actually. slow. They don't have enough mana for open wounds. If he pops his stick charges, they might, but they may not even need it. He gets the rage for the attack speed. Meanwhile, in the mid, Necrovo's going to die to control. And it looks like they're not quite able to get that kill. And Tusk, ooh, nice pop of that stick. Stone surviving, but just barely. And Necro once again dying. This mid lane not going at all like Taint wanted to. This Necro only 19 CS. He's level 6. Shadow Fiend level seven and a half. He's losing on all fronts against control. Yeah, and uh, the Furion isn't even doing that well either. He's only got he's only got the same CS as the Underlord here. So he's and actually, he might die top yeah, right now. Up, nice sprout, and he should be able to get away Good from TPL. here. Yep, nice. So Good use of that Good sprout. Clean TP there. Repman finds Radiance Courier. There it is, man. The, oh, and in the mid. Just barely catching the tail end of that. The Reaper's Scythe, I don't believe it was a Reaper's Scythe kill. Uh, but It was, actually, yeah. He just hit six and used it there, yeah. Done cool, then. Does that not... That, okay. It's, his respawn seemed average, like 28 seconds. Dyer's middle town is oh, well. I mean, 28 way, seconds at eight minutes is pretty, yeah. pretty long. He did commit the Reaper's Scythe. Regardless, we only caught the end of that kill. So that first use of the Necro ult... Uh, helping him kind of come back into this lane a little bit. He's still really far behind on CS, but that kill will be nice for him. And I see he's queued up raindrops in his inventory. We, an excellent item against Shadow Feed. Yeah, but he's also going. Uh, I don't know. He's going Atos first tier, which I don't. I don't know how I feel about that. I. I mean, it's going to help him pick off these heroes, and it's going to help him. Obviously, it's a good answer to these oh, this hero, and these DK and heroes. Super low bounty. Ratman will find that kill. I don't think they have dust. Nightmare coming out on Tusk and Cloudhop getting low. The Dragon Eye ult coming out and Stone himself in serious trouble. Get hit by that first Janata strike in Fab with that ult still available. The Ice Shards. He sees oh, Stone and shards. this is going to be an easy kill. Shuriken toss and Ratman finds two and they get a total of three kills up in that top lane in that little skirmish. Yeah. Fab committing that Dragon. I mean, form. like, like I said, you can't. This is this Bane pick is just. What, what, Tusk rolls in on you? Jakira runs at you? Bane does not care. These heroes just don't, and DK doesn't care either. Just does not deal with these heroes whatsoever. He does have the max rank Dragon's Blood too. So 18 armor and 18 health regen. TP coming in bot from the Nature's Prophet. And ooh, that that was a nice Nature's Prophet ult. He used that a little while before the fight and kills off Desmondus at the end of those bounces, Radiant stopping him from ulting away. So despite the other Radiant two lanes not yeah, we'll going there. great for the Radiant, not going great for Taint, their safe lane is going phenomenally well. But 
Will this Lifestealer alone be able to compete against a Shadow Fiend and a DK who are equally as farmed? And taking a look at the overall net worth, he's he's behind them, but only barely. So, Necro so far behind as well. Things are looking still very good for Blue. 3k gold lead, but Desmondus could just die here. They have open wounds. Yeah, I, I think he's dead here. Uh, they're sending in their heroes. Actually, maybe not. The ZPs are coming in. Immediate disengage. Bounty throwing a track on Like I hero. said, they just can't fight into this Bane. They just can't fight into this hero. With their heroes. They just they really can't. And the thing with the thing with Lifestealer, you know, he can he can get farmed, but yeah, he can't compete with these flash farmers like Shadow Fiend and Dragon Knight. He just has no way to. So even if he's equal now at ten minutes, if the next ten minutes go by and Team Taint doesn't take objectives, doesn't push their like force their hands, the Shadow Fiend and this Dragon Knight are just gonna get super fat. And they are not going to be able to deal with them. They just have no answers to these heroes. The the worst part is that this life stealer is so much of his team's damage, and the necro yeah, that's the other thing. is is so far behind that he's really not contributing much outside of his ult. The heals from Death Pulse are going to be pretty nice though. The top he's trying to fight up against Fab, but need to be careful against that dragon he can't. form. He can't. It's yeah, too no. much damage. Breathe fire too. He's getting real low. Should survive. TP in from Jakiro. I still don't think they kill Fab. They, eh, with no, the Major's Prophet, the Life Stealer is still too low HP. He would probably die. Sprout, yeah. Living Vision, but a missed Ice Path. And they, yeah, and they missed. And Fab can TP out. And he has Fab's a Chrysalis go for this already kill. as well. And ooh, he wants something, but I don't think he'll find it. The Wrath of Nature flying around. And he still need to be careful fighting this guy. He's starting to TP out. They have an Ice Path that does stop him. But the damage, he's so tanky. I don't know if they have enough dust just to be safe. Actually, narrowly. Narrowly missing the bounty hunter with that dust, but Fav just too tanky. They need the life stealer or or the, the necro post with the ult could also kill him off. Speaking of necro, Fiend's grip committed onto him. Control gets one raise, getting close. The second raise connects, and right click should be enough. He has the long raise, setting up with the nightmare as well. That's almost enough with the infused raindrop saving him, eating 120 of that damage. The mid range raise though uh, comes off cooldown and quick and easy pickup. So mid still going yeah. very yeah. well for blue and a 6k gold lead. Desmus immediately pops his ult. Hit of Malice and it should be out of here. And ooh, Stone, gotta be careful, man. Taking up those pit, that pit damage, the Firestone damage. Yeah, I mean, also the other thing we, we did talk about in the draft is uh, Team Taint's catch is very bad, really. They only have Tusk and Jakiro are their only real semi-stuns and Necrovo's ult is like 120 second cooldown that stuns them for not that long, really. Like two seconds? 1.5. Yeah, it's like two seconds, I think. Yeah, 1.5. And I mean, once you use all those spells, and if their heroes don't die, they're just gonna walk away, or even worse, they're gonna pop their eventual BKBs and just turn and kill you. Yeah, once BKB comes online, it's going to be a very difficult game, and Cloud Hob spotted him. He sprouts himself, another Shuriken, Firestorm, and he's going to die to that Firestorm, and one last right click, just for good measure from Desmondus, and that's the first track kill. I believe the first track kill of the game, actually. He didn't have it at that fight up at top, but they might get another one right here. They see this Life Stealer. Shuriken toss. Redman has track, does throw it out, and he's dead. Quick and easy kill, but easy. speaking of kills, Fab going down top to the Necrophos, throwing out the Reaper's Scythe. So across the map, uh, I, the recap not showing all of the kills, but I imagine in in one way favorable to Blue because it was a track kill, but because Taint are behind and getting a kill on the second most farmed hero in the game, very, very valuable to them. Uh, however, they lost their life to their bot lane. Yeah, that's not something we want. Also, you know, it's a 7k net worth lead, 7k gold of the for, for Team Blue. I, like I said, I mean, we almost have a S and Y up on control. Like I, when these heroes get items, I don't know, I don't know how they kill them. Like as long as Team Blue doesn't actually run around the map as single heroes, tusk. they don't have any potential of killing them. A little bit of overkill on that tusk, but yeah. you know, <laughs> better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. You know, just throw your, throw your, it's like, hey guys, kill those tusks, throw all your spells at them. Yeah. I mean, for, they're, for they're so ahead though, I think they could fight them. Yeah, at top, Fab trying to fight up against Necro, but Nage Prophet's there, spooks him away. I, without the Reaper's Scythe, I do not think they kill Fab. Uh, Necro, 
going for his Atos. I'd like to see something like a Veil and then a Radiance for the more consistent damage, but looks like Nature's Prophet getting tracked and beat down. Shuriken bounce from Creep to him, and he's dead. A killing three for Redman, and yet another track kill, adding more money to the bank of Team Blue. Yeah, these track kills are nothing to just like scoff at. They're actually just gaining more and more net worth with each one of these kills, and every time these heroes like like Furion or like like Necrophils are just out on their own, they're gonna they're gonna die to this this bounty hunter plus one, and it's not it's not what you want. You do not want to be feeding this team, especially Shadow Fiend Dragon Knight. You do not want to be feeding these heroes massive net worth advantage. It's Definitely not. Uh, Shadow Fiend especially scales incredibly well. He's already got oh, his, yeah. his S and Y almost completed. Has the spell amp talent. Has his dragon lance already. So control. This is one very dead necro here. <laughs> oh, nice. Pops that ghost shroud. Great ice shards coming in from the yeah, tusk. Yeah, there. Just completely zoning out blue, unable to pursue. They get the dragon form out as well. The mid tier one and the, all the tier ones are already dead, so they're not going to be able to use that dragon form to push. But Desmodus cutting the wave at bot Underlord, known to do that. Throw down the rain of fire, tank up the creeps, and just cut it up. Pops his ult. I don't know, he might die here. They have the Reaper Scythe, but he pops his hood, so he should be fine. His ult. Yeah, he should be okay. Sending him out. Actually, if Necro commits ult, they might kill him, actually. Yeah, they had punch up on Tusk, too. If they punch into Necro ult, I think he dies. He had Hood of Defiance active on him, though, so it would have eaten a lot of That's the true. Necro's ult damage. And it's only level 1 Necro Scythe mm -hmm. as well, so... I I think it was pretty good it been close. to not commit the Necro ult just because of that hood. Once that hood gets popped, it's yeah. kind of like, you know what, we without Life Stealer here, we, we can't kill this guy. Or and if he had a veil, maybe. But even that's yeah, very maybe questionable. If he had veil. Yeah, I, I agree. And Fab actually opting for a really interesting item here. He's going instead of the BKB, he's opting for the Lincoln Sphere. And now Lincoln is, is normally a very good item into the Necro, but I don't think it is this game. BKB, I think, is your item. Because even if you get Scythe this game, BKB negates all the damage. And BKB is excellent against the Jakiro, which is really going to be Fab's biggest issue is getting kited around by the Jakiro. Lincoln's doesn't help with that at all. It does actually practically nothing against Jakiro. And so it's going to no be ball. Fab. Lars fairly kind of. He's trying to TP. They have a Reaper Scythe, and they pop it for good measure. And But I, I do agree with your point that I think BKB would be much, much better this game. Uh, the Rod of Atos can be used to pop the Lincolns, or Open Wounds yeah, exactly. can be used to- there's Or so many Open Wounds, ways. or Snowball. Like, like there's so many ways. You're still, you're very likely going to get Reaper's Scythe. Not oh. to mention, this opens up Jakiro, still gonna yes. hit you with the Ice Path, the Macro Pyre damage. You're not right. negating any of that. So I, I think it's a little greedy to consider that. Uh, they can go four staffs. There's a lot of items they can build to just break that. Yes. I feel I feel like it's actually going to make this... Because they could push to end very quickly here. If Fav had BKB in the next like five minutes, I think they could actually just take Roche and win the game. Yeah. But I think with this Lincoln's pick, it's going to delay them. Because the, like Necro can just safe this Dragon Knight and kill him. I agree. It's Necro is a hero that loves items, but doesn't play that bad from behind just because of how Reaper Scythe works, you know? Especially against tanky cores like the Dragon Knight who oh, yeah. just, he's going to have a ton of strength. So if he gets to 50% HP, he just dies to that Reaper yep. Scythe. Yep, uh, just going to get shredded. Pipe likely to come out from Desmondus after his Guardian Griefs, which both of those items yeah, really helps. good counters to Necrozole. Yeah, really. And also, another thing, Control also not opting to go BKB early in his itemization, going straight now into the Hurricane Pike. I think Which again, I feel like, uh, B could be after I, Hurricane Pike, I mean, the I Hurricane Pike like. is, is... Yeah, I, I I don't know. I feel like you could go it now and you'd be okay. But I guess the Hurricane Pike is... You do have a lot of defensive... Like, you do have a very good defensive duo behind you with the Bane Underlord who can just, like... And you have a Dragonite frontline as well. But I feel like if he gets BKB, it's the same thing. He's, he's invincible, essentially. Like, he can just run at them and hit them, and they can't... What are they going to do? Like, what spells are they going to use? They can't... They can punch him. Walrus and punch. they can Speaking sight them, of, but you know they just punched Fab with that Walrus Punch. Shadow Fiend is here, though. So, Stone pops a Snowball. 
buying himself some time, but likely to come down anyway. They don't have the long raise, but the right clicks from Control are plenty. Looking for that track on the Jakiro, does manage to get him. And this Star Hurricane Pike now done He's not on, on Control. Uh, Lifestealer with a Relic. Been so bad. Yeah, he is massive. 2k gold ahead of even Bav. Now several CPs coming up to top. They want to try to stop this push. Stop any any kind of advantage going the way of the Dire at all. Uh, and what do you think of R on this Lifestealer going for Radiance? It's a pretty good timing on the not, Radiance, but I... Not but not sure. the game. Yeah. I, he needs to go armlet and death so he needs these items that he needs to go the old school build he needs to hit hard that's that's what he needs to do this game that is his job is to hit heroes incredibly hard while he's raged he's not supposed to be this frontliner who's kind of running around and being a nuisance that's necro's job this game but i think he's just gonna get kited with this with this red build he's really just gonna have no damage to offer he's just gonna be a minor nuisance and again like SF's gonna build BKB, and when that comes out, all of a sudden your main source of damage is gone, and he's just going to kill you. Oh, on to Fab, nice defensive force staff. Nation Croc TPing into the danger zone, but his Sprout gets blocked by the Lincoln's Requiem. Coming out, slowing up a lot of these heroes. Stone getting very, very low, and now the Fiend's Grip onto Nature's Prophet, but are in position to try to get some nice ice path. The Control dominating, and a beautiful Reaper Scythe to finish off one, but man, this right hook damage from Control is huge, and TPing in some reinforcements. Underlord, Uberlord, R jumping out, but he's still not very healthy. Pops the Rage, Hamlet using his Ghost Shroud as well, and it looks like Redman is in serious trouble. Gonna be going down, but Control's still mostly healthy, and I don't know if they can kill him at a buyback from Cloudhop. They get the Atos off onto Control, the Wrath of Nature flying around the map. Let's see what kind of damage he does once he comes in here. Blocked by for Desmondus, but Control still alive, but a Snowball forward. They miss Control with that Snowball, though. Without that stun, I don't know that they have the damage. They don't have the Control to keep him in place. So he will be able to TP out. Not a horrible defense for Taint, but did force the buyback from that Nature's Prophet. Even though, even with that buyback, in an 1100 gold swing in their favor. So a small victory for Taint Gaming in that case, yeah. especially considering that li no one else died except the Nature's Prophet. Uh, Tusk did yeah. die like, except for Fury early, like in the beginning. Early, um, yeah. I mean, I think this comes back to what we were saying about Fab not going BKB. I think if Fab has BKB there, they win the fight. They oh, completely yeah. demolish them. Because Fav was right in their faces, he was doing exactly what DK needs to do this game, but it was like they broke his Lincolns immediately, and then he just got scythed, and he was gone. He was just completely deleted, and then it was all of a sudden like, okay guys, well, our second primary source of damage is gone now. Uh, and then the rest of it, it could have been a lot worse for uh, for Blue here. If, if Taint had more catch, I think they get destroyed in that fight. I think that, in a way, because of their lack of catch, it sort of justifies the, the, the Necrophos route of Atos. Uh, it's yes, a good item yeah. to catch heroes. Maybe it's possible he even didn't consider the Radiance because Lifestealer was planning on going when that game, and they Life established Stealer, that. Yeah, that was, that was my thought, too. Uh, could st I would still like to see a Veil help Shakiro. Uh, they have the Radiance, obviously increases the damage of that, and makes his Reaper's life hurt so, yep. so very badly. Control finds somebody, but no Yules. The right click build, of course, means he does not have that fun little Requiem Tornado combo. Nope. No fun from him. It would have been a bad game for it, though. So I, I agree. Think I, I don't think the magic damage was the play this game. But I think uh, I think Blue have to play on the back foot now. They got away for this BKB on Fat, who's still not going in. He's going into AC now. Very greedy. Fiend's grip though, onto life so that he didn't get rage off either, so vulnerable to all sorts of damage. Yeah, a good gone. attempt at a force save. A nice ice path and a great ice shards. Zoning them away, but they still continue pursuit. They have track movement speed. But it doesn't look like they'll find anything else. But losing that life steal, your highest net worth hero. Not a good thing. Good yeah, effort. I think this comes down to like just understanding these heroes, and I think some of the issues with like the lower MMR players is they don't respect heroes like Bane. Definitely, and even if he had Rage on there, he's still gonna get hit by the Fiend grip. Yeah, he's still gonna get Fiend, and then he's just dead. But Bane. Okay, Bane I don't know. If, out. I don't know what Bane was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He was. The Slayer was a uh, sacrificial scouting. I, I think suppose. he was. I think he was trying to de ward. Yeah, I think they de warded. He was yeah, de warded. Uh, that century. But there's the Roche. They yeah, recently yeah. placed, so that was it. But. It's worthwhile for him. They still get the Roshan. And they I don't think they can contest that anyway. If they have Macro Pyre, it's possible no. because that is a lot of damage over time. It adds up very quickly. Uh, but without it, and without Lifestealer, it's so hard to do. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is, 
underlords like pit control is absurd. If you try to fight into an underlord in the pit, it's rough, especially with SF. Mm -hmm. Good AOE. But on SF both sides. again, talking about greedy builds, he's going axe, skipping the BKB Very altogether. That's so that... he's going. Oh, now he, okay, he's going blink down. Okay, that's ma so that, up to blink. That's but much better. But that's still... better. But I still think like, he's already got a movement item. Yeah, he needs he needs this BKB. I think. He needs, again, like, Hurricane Plague already allows him to do what he wants uh, to do. He wants to Lincoln's just, just got on top. Top of Necro's on the way. I think he's oh, dead here. Man. Ice Path. And he's trapped. Underlord, so though, dead. trying to bring in an ally or perhaps just himself. The Rod of Atos as well. It's just Dead no Bean Scare is Reaper Scythe, and he's dead. And now they have Ratman here. Desmond is pursuing. Nice Ice Path, keeping Underlord away. Shuriken's bouncing around on Hamlet. Another track coming out, giving them a lot of speed, but now Life Stealer is coming. They're going to want to be careful, they're careful continuing this chase. Snowball back, Life Stealer popping his open wounds with the Fiend's Grip immediately. Ratman going to die already, though, and Noble getting caught in that ice path as well. And Blue getting greedy. Getting punished for the lack of Such BKBs, and Desmond is caught by that Atos. Nice. Oh, what a nice, oh, nice ice shards. shards. Keeping him trapped in a beautiful pit of malice, but it's not going to matter. And now Desmond is also going to go down. That's four heroes claimed for Taint Gaming. Excellent execution. They lost nothing in that. And Fab, without, again, without that BKB, is BKB? very vulnerable. There's a lot of damage, especially magic damage, on the side of Taint. And that Reaper Scythe and doesn't the matter Scythe how was late you there. are. The Scythe was late. He would have well. died without the Scythe, It didn't come scythe, out right away. Yeah, he was a late Scythe. So, I mean... Like I'm saying, this BKB and the greed of these builds are really punishing them now. Like, they can't... As much as I don't like tank gaming's draft, and I think it lacks a lot of areas, you have to respect it. They have these heroes that can blow up your heroes. And if you don't itemize correctly, you're just going to get punished. Definitely. Definitely. And it looks like control. A nice ice... These ice pads, man, have been... And yeah, these shards, yeah, this guy, too. And the, the shards! The, the support play has Crazy. been really, really good. Fav wants to get some redemption, but... Oh, he's so fast, find it. Uh, chasing across the river, yeah. very risky. Even if you see profit, yeah, probably not the best idea. Meteor hammer on the profit, by the but way. Yeah, he's he's going this. Oddly enough, he's going the support nature's profit build from the off lane. Uh, not sure I very like interesting. That yeah, I I the... think uh, an orchid or a maelstrom or a hurricane pike or any any damage item mm -hmm. or pseudo like damage utility like orchid is the way to play this game. Definitely. I am sure. Like the fact. Like sheep stick, like on BKBs. What are they gonna do if you have a hex? I agree 100%. What do they do? Uh, Nature's Prophet, when you pick this hero in the off lane, it's it, it scales well with items. It's a great right clicking hero. It does. It's yeah. And, it is one of the best scaling itemization heroes in the game. Really. And, I mean, it's not horrible. The meteor hammer. I, I like the fourth staff. Could always be a hurricane pike. Uh, meteor hammer goes great with sprout. And he did get drums in phase, yes. so still can go those right-clicking items. Did just get that utility first. Maybe wants to try to rat out, but I think there's better rat items for a nature's profit than a meteor hammer. Yeah, certainly. Now Maelstrom. There's both. both. Picking up the macro pyre to try to zone them away from that tier two, but blue are smoked up. Fav pops his ult. They likely get this tower. Retman diving yeah, there's no deep. This. He gets Yules. Ice Pad coming out. Really good Ice Pad oh. once again. That's on three. And position in such a way that, just been dirty. Yeah, and position in a way that they can't chase. Like they can't. And they're gonna lose two tier twos off this as well. Yeah, nature's profit. Nature's profit. Ready for the rat gods. Oh, but needs to be careful. He's got to get. Wait, did they cancel that underlord? This bit is canceled. He canceled. Now, if I bring out bot requiem channels out, but it doesn't really connect on anybody. Just the edges of it hitting the tusk. They need to be careful to be counter engaged on here, or even worse, getting ratted even further as they don't have that underlord. Ult. Ice Path not going to connect on any heroes, but sure I can just bounce Furion's all going for Rax. And now they're tier 3 he's at bot, tier getting three. hit. Meteor Hammer. Fav TPing back, which means they could be engaged on down here at bot lane, a nightmare, and a pit of malice, so they should be fine duels to defend himself. They do manage to disengage, but they lost so much. The tier 2 mid. Yeah, tier 2 bottom, almost a tier 3, and almost a tier 2 mid as well. The and they didn't engage either. They're lucky that that oh, nice, ice nice there, Ben Noble. Aegis yeah. expired. So high ground siege maybe no longer on the menu for for blue and boots of travel picked up by the Shadow Fiend. Kind of sick of this nature's profit already. Uh, yeah, I guess so. But I'm telling you, this these BKBs, man, they need to come out, and they're still not opting for them. Again, control ops for bots here. 
These BKBs need to come out. They need these BKBs. They need to be able to fight these heroes. But as of right now, they I don't actually think they can engage into them in a full 5v5. They will lose because they don't have BKBs. And the Radiance mischance is something that would be mitigated completely by a BKB. And that increases survivability of every hero on tank aiming. Absolutely. Necros They're going to lose this tier 2 top. Going for a Scythe, already has yes. his Shivas. The Spirit Vessel with zero charges hasn't gotten er, any kills with that. Nightmare going to block the Shuriken, but now a great Ice Cat catches on two. A Life Stealer jumping in, but Fab getting a stun onto the Jakiro in the sidelines. Noble pops his Glimmer Cape, but going to be very, very slow. And will be found dust just to, pretty, just to be sure. A quick kill for this Life Stealer. Or this Tusk, I should say. Bottom tower has Bounty very hits. far back. I don't know if they have the vision. The dust is on cooldown. And now sending a bunch of TPs back. Control, to be careful bottom. To get control. He has that blink, has that Hurricane Pike, so he's able to get away very easily. But he gets a tier 3, which means Shrine's now vulnerable. Yeah. So an excellent job split pushing from control. Able to get a hold of all of his... Uh, Get a hold, like get some gold for his team, basically, and not go, go into a fight. Not yeah. going to a fight that he's not needed in. I mean, they they lose the bane, yes, and they did lose the tier two top, but it's not a complete disaster for them, especially getting, you know, vulnerable shrines. It gives you a lot more control over the Roche pit. That's probably the biggest factor. Oh yeah, it's cr yes, absolutely. Uh, another note here: control again, opting for another item before BKB, opting for the butterfly. Might get Cloud Hop though, his TP on cooldown, he has a Hurricane Pike of his own, starts oh, TPing, nice step. and I, he should be fine, he's tanky. He has no mana, yeah, and he, well, and Control had no mana for raises there, so mm -hmm. all of his burst damage. Yep. Butterfly will help nice. with that, those right clicks. Yeah, certainly, but I think, I, does, I don't think it matters, because I think this life stealer gets on top of you, and what are you, what are you gonna do to him? What, he's just gonna man mode you right now. I agree, and that the Jakiro Ice Paths again, to me, this oh hero my God. is like, on point. the supports yeah, on MVP. Tain are MVP. They are playing so well. Those ice shards and those ice pads lock. Just the control they get in fights from zoning enemy heroes apart from each other, making movement difficult for blue, meaning Dragon Knight can't get into these fights some of the time. He's just zoned out just by ice BKB. shards. Uh, does he have a blink? No, he does not. I would like no, to see that, he's, too. Like blink he BKB. finished up the AC, and he's now opting to go bots. These items are just so greedy. In your Every hammer. core. Out of Atos. Snowball just forward onto Bane. Greedy. And Dust. Yep, that's a dead Bane. They yeah, have Reaper Scythe, but don't need rapping. it. Floris Punch. Also not committed. Okay, Desmond is. Oh, Bane. Actually, right. make it out of here. Good four staff. And track onto Hamlet, providing some information. It looks like Control might want to go in on this, but Ice Shards will zone them out a little bit. Good Ice Path as well. Discourage any kind of chase, but look at this. Little, little do Blue know there's an infestation. In the bot lane, Nature's Prophet stuns that, base. and it looks like he's going to get this tier 3. Oh, no, it just door. survives. Backdoor protection coming up just in time, and he gets out, though. And unfortunately for them, they... All right, what if I compete? Shut up. That's a decent item for him this game, but again, the magic damage. Yep. Very, very... It's. I think the Reaper Scythe is the game-winning spell for Taint. Uh, just Absolutely. delete a hero who's at 50% HP. Yeah, I God agree. God help you if he gets and an Axe. Oh, I... Oh, God. I don't 25 want second Talk about if this guy gets an Axe. Oh, my God. It's over if he gets Axe. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's game is over if he gets Axe, actually, because, again, both, both the main course on blue are just completely refusing to build the one item they need to actually win them the game. It also makes them weak against things like the Shiva's Guard, the Radiance once again, yeah. the, all the, the magic damage too. from the Jakiro, the Sheep Stick. Like, there's so many things to be blocked that they are yeah, unable all to. All the damage essentially from Take Gaming right now is magic because their Furion didn't go a right click build, their Life Stealer did not go a right click build. Essentially all of their damage forms are magic. If they had BKB, these heroes just do no damage, but they're again just refusing. However, Blue going in onto the rags. Fab popping his ultimate a good ice pad though, stunning up Desmond as they turn their attention to Fab. His Lincoln's is broken. The Guardian Greaves is popped and Fab isolated from part of his team. Shadow Fiend getting Yules up. Walrus Punch coming out onto this Dragonite, but he's so incredibly tanky. The Reaper Sight though, finishing him off, and Desmond is getting very low. Life Stealer burning him down with that Radiance, and he goes down to a rise click. And now Control in serious trouble. His blink on cooldown from that Radiance. They're chasing him down, but Life Stealer chooses to go after Retman instead with a snowball. 
trying to connect before you can get that. He does have shards and it misses in control, able to juke. And Ratman TPing away. They do spot him and Life Stealer perhaps be it committed to that Shadow Fiend, they would have caught him, but unable to make up his mind. However, still a 2100 gold swing in oh, favor of Tank. Oh, God! Ooh, backdoor, and now getting uh, some damage on the racks, trying to channel that Requiem. Pop Sprout on himself. They don't, they don't have vision. No, no vision. No way to, he, he he's Hurricane gone. Pikes the wrong way, and now he's out. And permanent, permanent damage to range as well. Uh, and that gold lead, control built, or sorry, blue built, that over 10k gold lead, it's gone. Gone. And XP, Like I said, BKBs, they, they can't fight them. They can't fight them 5v5 without the BKBs, we saw that. Like, if Fab tried to walk up front line and do what Dragon needs to do, man mode and make front line, but he can't, because he doesn't have BKB. Control as well, didn't get to Requiem because he got used by Jakiro. And if he had BKB, I'm sure if BKBs were on both those cores, that's a one fight, and that's game. That's a set of wrecks at a minimum, and probably game. Definitely. But they're refusing, and Control's going Yules now. It's just the... The SF not getting BKB isn't as bad, because he can hangman the back lines, he can hit you from far away. But yeah, Fab at least, but... Can, he really, really need. I would even go so far as to say, is, you know what, sell the Lincolns and get a BKB, because the ult, <laughs> every time he has died, every single death... Has been Reaper's Scythe. Has been avoidable. Yeah, it, it, essentially, if you had DKB, it would just be avoidable. It completely changed how this game is played by Taint. The Life Stealer, again, not really a lot of right clicking items. It's just the Radiance, and oh, found Desmondus, and oh man. Exactly. Doesn't and have a lot of right clicking items. Next item for away this Underlord, and he's nice for staff, but oh it's Noble Forward, and ooh, Tusk. In the danger zone, buddy. He's trying to get out of here. Control, not able to land that short raise, but. Dragon oh, Tail going, going to hit, and they do get a nice free kill on oh, one and a TP fight. out. The Shuriken, nice bounce, and a Fiend's Grip committed as well. So they do manage to get two right, heroes, two track kills as well, but look at this. Nature Prophet doing what he can Red to back kill protection. Cloud Hop, the legend, He's man. Just cutting the wave, trying to stop it as much as he can, and forcing those TPs. This means it's difficult for Blue to capitalize on these, on these one fights that they get, but they did get two track kills off of that. But I'm beginning to get worried because look at the net worth of the individual cores as well. It used to be Dragon Knight ahead of this Life Stealer, ahead of the Ever of Necro and, and NP, but now Necro almost caught up to him, and Nature's Prophet and Life Stealer ahead. Things looking and Sheep Stick completed on Claw Top, by the way. So once again, BKB. The lit the more items that Tank Gaming seems to get, the more useful BKB seems to be getting, which is the opposite of how games normally go in the way of a heavy magic damage draft, but can gaming are like, you're not gonna buy BKBs? We're just gonna keep going on the magic damage. Mm -hmm. They have a pipe, Desmus queuing up a meteor hammer of his own, Yules catching him. Ice path on cooldown, but the dual breath slow coming in. They get a feet they get a walrus punch on Noble. Noble will go down to right click from the tower. They be able to find anything else. Desmondus has his ultimate available. Caught in the open wounds. Does pop the dark rift, but I don't think it's going to be fast enough. Arth, do they have the damage? He might just get away with Bretman as well, and he's gone. So they do manage to slip away, but the Rod of Atos catching on to Fav. It's popped by his Lincolns. He does manage oh, to get that. No. Oh no, the greed. He wanted the shrine oh, too no. bad, and now he's going to die for it. He starts TPing away. Reaper Sight to cancel. He's dead. Oh man, so much greed. 106 seconds. He wanted oh. that shrine too bad, man, and it's had. I don't think that's oh worth my it. God. Another one. Definitely not worth gold it. Gold swing in favor of Tank Gaming, who aren't aren't building a real net worth lead yet, but they're so close. And no. And I mean, again, like the net worth lead they have is all on <laughs> magic damage items that are completely countered by BKB. But both the cores here on blue are just like, you know what? I don't want to build that in this game. I just don't want to build that item. It's boring King Bar, right? That's what that stands yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they just, Who needs that item? Who needs it? It just feels like they're really not respecting Taint. At all. They had such a good start. Okay, might, Ooh, was... this is a dead nature's oh, profit. there it is. Nice well speed played. strip. And the Requiem. Lots of damage and a raise. He's dead. Well played. Well Come played from Nobo there. Mm -hmm. Really smart play. Baits the Fury on there. But a bot, they lose their ranged racks. So nature's profit still continues to create as much space as he possibly can for his team. I don't really like... But this might be the fight, actually, if you're blue, though. Oh, you're right. Yeah, this might be the fight. This. They're actually... Nice. They caught... Yeah, Necro caught out. needs to be careful. Good spirit vessel on him. Beautiful oh. pit of malice. 
And the Macro Pirate coming out there doing a lot of damage. Noble getting extremely low. R running around trying to make havoc. The buyback from Nature's Prophet bringing him in. Desmond is getting sheeped up. A buyback as well from Dragon Knight. Fav TPing into the fight. Pops Elder Dragon for him. Desmond is getting extremely low. So no Stone so also cool low. And Noble trying to buy some space for himself. They lose Desmond as he also has buyback. And Fav caught in that ice path. Stunned up, buying time, but control getting a kill onto Tusk. And now Hammond also getting low. The Hurricane Pike damage doing so much, but Hamlet's still alive. The Shuriken. Shiva's guard. Oh, I don't think they can get him. And they dust off Retman as well. The Yule's coming out. And a beautiful ice by catching him inside that sprout as well. They pop the Treants. I think they should have kept him there. And Retman going to go down. Right clicks from Hamlet. And then Fat and the control dying in the mid to R. Buying back immediately. Buyback from Desmondus as well. This could be a game ending moment. So they turn their attention to Rax. Yeah, dieback no and also control. Dieback there, so. Fav gone without buyback, dead for 55 seconds, no Dragon Knight. Mid though, they are trying to find this Nature's Prophet, they glimmer him up, Hex coming out onto control, but I don't think they have the damage. However, Desmodus, he bought back, if he dies, that's really bad. Reaper Scythe, and he's oh, just managed to survive thanks to that pipe of insight shield. They're getting low, and it looks like R will finish him off with some right clicks, and now they turn their attention to control. No, back to the racks, but a Fiend's Grip onto this life stealer. Thankfully for him, the rage is up. A beautiful hex canceling that, and an ice path as well, setting up for a kill onto Noble. A double kill for R. And the first lane of Rax actually claimed by Tank Gaming. It looks like with that Nature's Prophet, they're going to be looking for more Meteor Hammer onto that top lane of onto that top tier three. In the mid tier three, going down, and things are looking just from bad to worse for Blue. Look at that gold graph. Goes 11k in favor of Blue, and then back the other direction, 11k in favor of Tank. 12k now. Two lanes of Rax and. Suddenly, I don't know if Blue can come back into this game. It's going to be incredibly yeah, difficult to do. I don't do. think they can. Their mega, their mega defense is terrible. Fab TPing and gets a stun onto the Nature's Prophet. The Shuriken's they bouncing around. They might try to find it, but in He can't hex. go in deep on this, though. He doesn't have buyback. He has to be careful. Trying to TP, but Cloud Hop's TP is canceled. Rod of Atos onto Fab. They don't have the Reaper Scythe either, but Control getting very, very low. Walrus Punch onto him, and he goes down to Stone. Now they're turning their attention onto Fab. Snowball forward. If he dies, that's very likely GG to put the Solar Crest onto him as well. And it looks like it's a slow but steady death for Fab. But Life Stealer here might speed things up a bit. A monster kill for and that Life GG. Stealer. And GG called a 16k gold lead at the end. And an excellent comeback coming in from Taint, but it just seems like Hubris from Blue. Just not respecting B the magic K damage. B. Yeah, the BKB makes Necro no for that. not a hero. Necropost is not a hero that game if you get BKB. Even that and five Life Stealer's build would have been completely negated. Completely negated. BKB. All right, that's the name of the game here for game one was BKBs need to come out and they never did, so. So Blue down. Bit of a throw here from Blue. Oh, I, I'd agree, but Taint definitely playing, especially that Nature's Prophet and the Jakiro oh, plays. Oh my god. They played well. They played well. They, they, I mean, they took their advantage. They were like, these guys are not going to build BKB, so why do we care? We're going to build more magic damage. We're going to nuke their squishy heroes now. Excellent play from Tank Gaming, uh, capitalizing on all of Blue's mistakes there, and very, uh, very cool under pressure when they were so far behind at the start of this game. So Tank Gaming up one game Absolutely. in this best of five. We have at least two more to go. We'll see if Blue learn from their mistakes going on into game number two, which will be up any any minute now, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to wait for that lobby. And it looks like my lag is it's all gone. Thank God. So we will be back in just a moment. I'm going to be muting myself, putting on some music till the lobby is back up. Thank you guys for stopping by. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 